this episode of Capes and Limited Takes is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. Get awesome headphones at tweakedaudio.com and use the code Tweaked to get 30% heavy. off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. What you can get there is the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. This is Luca Perk, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. This is Comics Illustrator Ron Friends, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. There's a thin line between heroism and madness. Here the line fades to nothing at all. This is a world of capes and lunatics. And nothing is off limits. <laughs> Hello and uh, why's that crack? Hello and welcome back to the Capes and Lunatics, episode 159. All my babies are here. Anyway, I am Phil. Joining me tonight is coming to you at me from the middle of an earthquake in New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to adjust this camera. I don't like the angle. Uh, it's Charlie, the Professor Essa. I like you have a bad angle. More like Charlie, the pretty boy Essa. Am I right, people? Uh, I was. Yeah. The problem was because it's an undershot. I was all lower torso, and my head just looked like the mount, the peak of Mount Everest. And- enough of your under, enough of your under boob. And coming to you from Florida, somewhere down there is. Hey, uh, Queen of the Armadillos, And coming to us from his uh, fortress in Ohio, it is. It's Tyler. Hanging out yeah. here in the Cave of Solitude. See, the music knew to shut up when Tyler was about to speak. It knew, it knew it was time. Oh, please. Oh, please. Charlie, oh, quit playing with the mustache. He was complaining before we got on that it's the one side's growing up and one side's growing down. Oh, it no. frustrates me. You gotta, you gotta get, you gotta get on that, Charlie. How did those nineteenth-century men keep that under control? Boy, they, they had, you know what they used. I will be honest with you. They had a higher quality mustache wax, higher quality hold. Um, if I had some good old classic fop, maybe I'd be okay right now. But you know, or Dapper Dan. But uh, no, I'm stuck with hipster stuff, and that just it. It doesn't do. Really, what I want is Clubman's mustache wax. That stuff, that stuff has hold. But uh, you can only get it if you go to like the the cosmetic shops, and those are aren't like the. De- well, actually, they might be starting to open up now, but now it's uh, it's it's a whole thing. We're gonna be in the green next week, woo! Like Friday. Uh, mm-hmm. For a week, anyway. Sure. <laughs> well, till the fall, probably. Come on. No, I watch. Trust me, it's my job. I gotta watch these spikes. I'm like, oh, go down, 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 spike, down, 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 spike, down, 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 spike. <laughs> it's a stagger step, but it keeps on spiking. So sounds like a blind, Jan. I'm just saying, man. I, 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 I was creating the phases for our COVID response re- return policy, and as I'm going through all the data, it's like, oh my gosh, it's like you know. If this happens, we can do this. But if this other thing happens, we're going back to this one, you know. And it's it's a lot of it's a lot of it's a lot of mess out there. And uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's <laughs> that's that. So yes, if you're lucky enough not to have everything closed yet, wear a mask. That's outside. enough adulting. Yes, let's get to some serious stuff. Like Tyler, you weren't here last week. I know. Unlike the rest of us, you're excited for a Snyder Cut, aren't you? I am. You know, and I'll, I, this is all I'm going to say is there's a. I'm excited because there's enough evidence that the movie is going to have a lot of footage, a lot of stuff that we never saw. Yeah, didn't they say six hours? They said he had a five hour assembly cut. Four hours was his first put together cut. So they're looking at doing for like. Six episode miniseries around forty minutes a piece. Um, I just want to see all the footage. Yeah, I want Flash to not look like a goofball. I want Too Cyborg's late. story. That, that's not Wheaton's doing. Uh, <laughs> that's Ezra Miller's doing. Okay? I mean, yes and no. I mean, I've watched Justice League enough to kind of tell what's what, um, or what you assume is what. Why do you hate yourself? Well, I mean, all you have to do is look at Ezra Miller's hair. His hair is a dead giveaway of reshoots. 
mm-hmm. look at the background and the colorization, especially if you watch on higher definition, you can see how they faded out the backgrounds a lot of times to kind of make it look fuzzier so that it mm-hmm. blends in. I mean, especially, I mean, a, a great example is the scene where Batman first goes to the Flash's house and he throws the batarang and he catches it and he has the line from the trailer and then he starts talking about brunch. That is all reshoot and you can tell. It's so obvious. Batman. Um, yeah, brunch, I have to assume, is a Whedon. That, that's, def- that's that's 99% Whedon. I mean, there there is so much in it that you can start to tell like more and more um, just where the footage was altered. Colorization. Um, look at look at Affleck's face, like his his beard yeah. and in his cheeks, or you can tell he was definitely then, drinking through the wheat and reshoots. That's all I'm gonna say about. Here's it. what I am gonna say: I am actually very excited about this. I'm excited about this, and I'm excited about uh, Cavill being put in as something of a, a connective tissue, the way that the Marvel Universe had. Um, Nick Fury or the Hulk appearing in a lot of different franchises. Well, yeah, that's what, that is not what the article said that he's gonna kind of be like the Hulk, where he's not gonna get his own solo movie. He's just gonna like what show up in everyone else's movie. Well, he's gonna be he's gonna be a connective tissue. Now, maybe that means yes, there is not gonna be another standalone Superman movie for a little while. That does not preclude it. The re- only reason the Hulk doesn't have a standalone movie is because. No yeah, well, because you know he has the Norton one, which was the last one made. Tristan said that the Hulk does have a standalone movie. Those were made with Universal. Right now, um, you don't remember the MCU one? Yes, it was MCU, Tristan, but it's that's that predates the current thing. Anyway, but they have to give money to you. Okay. <laughs> it, it it's okay. Yes, it's I know you interrupt. Out. I can't always hear you either. So it sounds like I'm just talking to myself. But here's what mm-hmm. I want to say. It tells me that DC has learned that just because something doesn't work, you don't throw it away. You say, okay, maybe that wasn't the best way to do it. Let's see what else we can do. Let's keep on our strategy. You know, because Marvel could have bailed at any time. Marvel could have bailed on the interconnected universe after Hulk. You know, when Thor were. Thor the Dark World wasn't what they wanted it to be. They could have said, "Eh, this isn't working. Instead, they stuck with it. They said, no, we've got a plan and we're going to walk through it. Now, is Snyder's plan the right plan? I'm not going to say that in any anything. I man hasn't. Man did not put a shirt on dark side, and I don't like a shirt with dark side. I don't. Dark I don't. Side, my thing is, I don't expect this to be a continuation of Snyder's plan. I think we're going to I, the only film that may have some sort of effective retconning, whatever, is Aquaman. But yeah, I don't. There's a I lot don't, of Aquaman footage missing. I don't yeah. see the Snyder cut because people are arguing like which movies can, and I don't think it's going to matter because I really don't yeah. see it this coming out and then them like building off the back of this in any way. Um, you know, the movies we I have. Know, they could Superman return this whole thing though, Tyler. They really could. This could be the Donald cut. We don't I mean, know. AT&T uh, you know, is being really weird right now. I'm not holding my breath on anything. Like, you know, I, I, you know, already the rumors are starting that Ben Affleck's going to come back as Batman. That he, and I'm just like, you know what? I, I, I said, when it comes to a lot of the, with any of the Warner DC films, until I'm sitting in the seat, basically, then I'll really commit to belief. <laughs> Well, but what I'm saying is, I, I, I get the feeling that they're it, just the fact that they're going to say they're going to have Cavill in a lot of things, and the way that Cavill, to some extent or another, is ostensibly in Shazam. Yeah. You know, it's the Cavill suit in Shazam. Yeah. And that is this idea of creating this interconnected universe. And I get the feeling, I honestly get the feeling that they're going to say, you know what, let's not throw out the baby with the bathwater. Now, maybe it's not going to be Snyder's 100% vision, but it's a starting point. Right. You know, John saying. Favreau didn't direct a lot more after Iron Man, you know? Um, he started something. Oh, he did Iron Man 2, too? Yeah, well, you know, we all saw how that went, too. So, hey. you know, and again, and hey, again. The Iron Man Mar- trilogy holds up, unlike Thor. Anyway. Well, Thor gets better as it goes on. And, so. two was, and Iron Man 2 is better than 3. Fighting. 
Well, you know, any Iron Man is- Two got sacrificed to to backdoor Shield, and Iron Man Three is like a a disconnected film that doesn't pay off anywhere else. Too many empty suits flying around in Iron Man Three. Anyway, at the end of the day, but that's sort of the thing. There's always going to be criticism, and I think that's what DC has learned. It's like, oh, you know what? You can't make nerds happy. So maybe we should just make films that make a lot of money and not worry so much that the that the nerds are going to say, well, you know, technically, in this scene, you have this storyline, but then that's sort of undone in your next film, and then Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. doesn't seem to be connected, uh, you know, even though they always do. Like if you're a, if you're a good nerd, you know that. But um, you know, and if DC stops trying to please the nerds, they may have a really good extended uh, DC universe. Because, you know, yeah. my, like I like I said, you know, Snyder had his five movie idea. I don't think the Snyder cut represents continuing his idea. Um, like you said, Cavill is present. It is. I mean. I I like like my thing is I'm excited at the idea of him coming and doing more Superman. I think he got shortchanged a lot with how his portrayal got changed for um you know BVS and then Justice League. But until we, I see like footage being shot and actually plans, I'm not like super excited. Like I feel like all we get is talk, talk, talk until I see like some actual footage progression then i'll then i'll be more excited like they've just they've talked Tyler, it up so much i know what you're really excited for it's the black suit that's the only only god forsaken reason why i'm even curious about the movie because we all saw the footage and we looked at the movie and said what the hell happened to the black i don't want the black suit unless the mullet comes with it I See, honestly, yeah, I'll tell you, okay. the beard, the whole honestly with everything with the Snyder cut, I'll tell you what I'm most interested in is Cyborg. Because yeah, even, it, even in the other, like the other cut, I call it the Alan Smithy cut at this point. Um, mm-hmm. I I watched that film and I really liked what Ray Fisher was doing. Mm-hmm. I really and that's the one I felt like out of every character. Like, yeah, Barry got shortchanged because they made him a complete butt of all jokes. Um, but Cyborg was supposed to be like the heart of the film. And I want to see his story. Like, so. Yeah. Well, you know, my problem with the black suit is mostly that apparently that relates to that dark Superman future where Superman decides he's going to join forces with Darkseid. And that's apparently what the whole dark dream sequence was, was that. Well, um, we, we do know that that nightmare scene was to take place in what would have been part of Justice League Part 2. Mm-hmm. And then the, the, there was Justice League and Justice League Part 2. And then when they went to film Justice League, they reworked the stories into one film. And that's what they shot. And then, and then, and then that's where we got our four hour movie. And then when they went in to do the reshoots is where that Whedon wrote his 80 new pages and shot 80 pages to a, an hour and 46 minute movie. So, and if you're thinking, you know, 80 pages, that's a minute per page in film talk. That's the majority of the film that we saw. So, I just want to see uh, like the vision that was originally established because we had more with these characters and I want to see uh, like I said, Cyborg. I want to see the as or the Iris West rescue scene. I want to see the football game. I want to see Mark McClure's original cameo. My sweet summer child. So. Yeah, I mean. We'll see what it is. Uh, if anyone can ever actually uh, get access to uh, HBO Max, because you can't get it if you have Roku, you can't get it if you have. Oh um, uh, yeah, I can't get it. it if you have uh, an, a Fire Stick. Yeah, I was gonna right say. Right now, I... the only thing I can watch it on is my phone. That is, I cannot believe when I found out that it's not on Roku. 
Because Roku hey, is always geez, like, what are you doing? Or, or any Amazon thing. Yeah, I have an Amazon Fire well, Cube. Nope. I know, there. I know the Amazon because Amazon's really strict. Because like when I was working for Spectrum, their app was not approved for Fire Stick. Uh, they had problems with getting it on Fire Stick because for a while there was issues with Amazon adding things to their Fire Stick. Yeah, but DC uh, Universe, DC Universe is on there. Oh, I, yeah, I know. I'm just saying. Do like, you remember that DC Universe wasn't at the start? Uh, okay. You remember I had that problem that DC Universe I was say, wasn't I on the first. Universe. Universe. I could only watch DC Universe yeah. when that first came out on my phone. And but it's it the same thing me, Disney with Plus Roku. Because yeah. Roku is like the safe one that everyone buys that's supposed to be able to do everything. Um, it came with a brand new TV. It's built into a lot of TVs now. They drop and them. I mean, you can do HBO Go and HBO Now on Roku. So yeah. why can't you have HBO Max? I don't think it's the same infrastructure, honestly. I, I don't I don't think it is either, but there's a lot of people who have HBO Go or now. I can't remember which one's which. Well but it, okay. it's now turned over to HBO Max. I think wasn't it the yeah. now? HBO maybe? Now yeah. has become HBO Max. Right. HBO That's what Go. Is. HBO Go is what you have if you have a subscription to HBO Go. HBO yeah. Now is what you have if you buy a separate subscription. To HBO outside of the HBO um, cable, package, cable yeah. package. So that's the differentiation. Um, but the problem with HBO now is you can't sign into HBO now if you have an HBO, um, if you are have a streaming HBO. So you can't access it just because you have H the way that you can HBO Go. But also, HBO Go isn't being very cooperative right now either. So right now, I've got HBO Go and HBO Now. Neither one is working. Um, but now we know why they dropped it on a Wednesday. So they could actually maybe have it up by the weekend. And because, we've solved it. I mean, I've been Except exploring it. And I've been exploring it. And it's okay. I mean, it's got some stuff on there. But a lot of it's just like, I don't know. I th Big Bang Theory is one thing that's excited about, but if you've had CBX All Access, it was already there. Um, yeah, Friends is streaming on there, but you know, it's like I hate when it leaves one streaming service to go to another. Like it was, you know, up until December, it was on Netflix, and now here we are five months later, and it's on. I mean, and I mean, here. I guess you could watch any episode, but I was just watching Friends on TBS today. Yeah. Right. They and it even, because it even says when you log into HBO Max, it has Friends and Thomas says, uh, like finally here or something like that. And I'm just like, I mean, I don't know. I just, I'm tired of stuff, jumping services and having to chase stuff on a streaming platform. Yeah. That's why I, yeah, you know, um, there are some cool stuff I found on there. Um, they're, they have a deep, like, it's interesting. You know, we've, we've probably talked, we talked about this. It it was it would only be logical for DC Universe to get rolled up into HBO Max because yep. they have a DC tab on there, yep. and a lot of the similar stuff is already there. You know, a lot of there's a lot of crossover movies, um, not as much the cartoons, but a couple. Um, HBO Max has Beware the Batman. DC Universe doesn't have Beware the Batman. <laughs> yeah, they got Beware the Batman. That makes sense. Um, you know, you know what I'm saying like poop, poopity poop. <laughs> What they do have in their new content, which again, not pushing the new content. I don't know why. I don't know because actually their new content, one of the new contents they have is completely redone new Looney Tunes cartoons. I watched six of them today. And I love those. I mean, I, I don't, I'm going to be honest, their Bugs Bunny cartoons, not their best, but Bugs Bunny was never my favorite character. But first one you get, which has a real old old school Daffy and 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 Porky buddy comedy on the road to the uh, Monkey Bird Temple. That is just such a brilliant piece of transgressive Looney Tunes comedy, cross dressing marriages, half Daffy Duck babies. It's amazing. I mean, and it was I, I, I watched like the first six episodes, I think, or five, because mm -hmm. I put on one to check it out. And then my kids were like, let's watch another one. 
let's do another one. They just they were enjoying it, so we just kept watching yeah. it. And that was one of the first things. But I'm with you. Like, think back to when Netflix started Netflix Originals. Was there anything that really took off as a Netflix original until the Marvel shows hit? Until like Daredevil? A couple things. Orange is the New Black. And then that one werewolf show with, by Eli Roth that was big from, until like season three for that. Okay. And that's what I was trying to think of because I, like, I feel like it took a while for Netflix originals to start to gain like oomph, you know? Well, yeah. Well, they had to get, well, they had to get an established fan base to want to watch their stuff. That's where the Marvel shows helped Netflix in many ways. Many argue helped save Netflix. And that's what I'm saying. It's like launching these platforms, I feel like with original content, but not like, I don't know, having some sort of identified IP original coming, I think would help like something more than just, you know, Apple's got to. None of their stuff is ready to go. Like the, the gossip girl reunion on the, the reunion um, season, that's not ready to go. It was a couple other things that they were working yeah. on as revivals I mean, and, and stuff that aren't ready to go. Um, the Game of Thrones, you know, House of whatever it is, House of Dragons, it's not ready to go. That, you know, the Game of Thrones prequel or whatever, that's yeah. not ready to go. I mean, so I mean it's, like, eh. it's like with Disney Plus, Disney, there was all this, <laughs> Disney had all this talk about they're going to give us all these Marvel shows. And here we are almost a year after launch and we haven't got one. The only thing we really got has been the Mandalorian, which was great. Well, yeah, but we got that day one. But yeah. so many people jumped on, watched that, then dropped off. I yeah, but did Corona slow that down any at all? Though? Yeah. Well, oh. I mean, like I said, I mean, to me, there's a lot of stuff on Disney Plus that I can, I you know, I can jump on and I can find. I can always find something fun on Disney Plus. You know, well, but, and, I, I can too. But you yeah. know, a lot, a lot of the stuff for me, like. Is I want, I don't know, I want originals yeah. and stuff that you're talking about doing, you know, like, because uh, Janine and I were talking about it the other day, and she's like, well, what all's, you know, the HBO Max going to be? And I was like, well, that's where eventually we're supposed to get that Justice League Dark series. Mm-hmm. We're supposed to get the Green Lantern series. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I just want some original stuff that, like, like Lila said about, the prequel to Game of Thrones, something that is like comfort, like something you kind yeah. of know enough about instead of some of these originals that are like, okay, that just looks, it's completely original. Maybe I'll watch it. I don't have any relationship with it. Um, no. You know, and, and Mandalorian was out the door of Star Wars, you know, and yeah. it had everyone hooked. I know. And I thought that was a brilliant idea to have that thing. And and what I will say is, I think that had HBO Max pushed their, you know, like if all they had was Looney Tunes and Elmo, they should have really sold that. Because first yeah. off, if nothing else, Looney Tunes and Elmo are insanely memeable. These are things that you can get a a social media romp on um, that could have helped them in these moments. Um. You know, and and I think that that is that's where where I think that the, you know, and I think maybe their launch date getting hit by Corona, in the same way that the Marvel stuff on Disney Plus has got hit by the Corona, you know, they're kind of stuck in this spot now. Maybe HBO Max could have delayed their launch date, but then of course there's all these costs involved in that, and so I think maybe what D- HBO Max is going to do is they're going to basically try to break even until they can bust out. That's why they're doing the Snyder Cut. Just saying, they're trying to get that money. That was their big thing. Except that that's not going to give them money for like months. I know, but that's the weird. Yeah, because that was their big uh, publicity thing for HBO Max. They're like, oh, we're going to have the Snyder Cut next year. And it should have, honestly, it should have been at launch. They should have dropped it out of surprise and guaranteed at launch because that would have rushed I mean, you had three yeah, years. but three they, years, they weren't going to have that at launch because, first off, they didn't – I mean, I think in, on some level they were kind of forced to do – I kind of get the feeling – so basically here's my thought on, on the Snyder Cut is that essentially they – probably because of corona, they had no way to get the content they wanted to on. Now, I don't know what's left on Doom Patrol because I would have launched season two of Doom Patrol. There the you start. go. 
You know, that would have been the smart thing because it says it's coming. It's coming relatively soon. It's the end of June. Like, it's June yeah. 20th. I bet you they're something. kicking themselves. They didn't um, take Stargirl when they had the chance because Stargirl is performing really well for not only DC uh, Universe, but also for CW. It held 100% oh, yeah. retention rate from the pilot episode to the second episode. So. It's oh, been it's, great. It my is kid, fantastic. My kids love it. Solomon even has down. He said, Daddy, today's what? I said, it's Friday. He goes, okay, so Monday's new Stargirl. Okay. Like, oh. And Sayla is she started like she was mad that the first episode didn't have her costume so when she got her costume in the second episode she was jumping on the furniture and was excited so my kids are loving it i mean i'm enjoying it but it's they are getting a lot like out a, of it. A DC show. i was kind of shocked but like i said they, dc that's the one thing that dc tv's been doing they've been kind of playing around with that family family formula yeah and, that, and i kind of like it and i do too and that's what's made me very happy about star girl and yeah i mean that would have been a great one to have at launch um i know i know the starter cut stuff started back in november that's when negotiations with hbo uh, i mean with warner and the snyder has actually started happening to complete it but it would have been or even god forbid i'll say this but even if they had the uh you know the air cut a suicide squad or something at launch because that one would have been easier to put together. You monster! Don't give them any ideas. <laughs> oh, they're talking about oh, it. All. It's already. I mean, oh, it's I too- know. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it, they could have. They could have dropped a momentum. bunch of. What they could have dropped was a bunch of stuff that they have that are that was you know your Blu-ray extended editions that they have already on the shelf that maybe you didn't buy, but now oh now it's just included. You know, um, being able to, you know, being able, I don't know if you can, can you watch all of the Supermans from one to four and then, uh, Superman returns at the end of it right now? I don't, I have to look. Yeah. Cause see, I know at one that's point they were all... that we don't know that. Oh, Tyler, well, did, well, Tyler, did you see HBO max has Supergirl, the, the movie? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And, that's and that's fine. You can find it. And what's crazy? I actually I mean, bought the movie for five dollars at Walmart though, like a year yeah. ago. So. Yeah, I have. I have. But what what kills me is just like on DC Universe how they'll rotate stuff on and off, and that's why I don't know if all the Superman movies are still there because at one point I know they all were, but not Returns. So Returns yeah. should be on HBO Max unless it's still on Netflix because it was, but. But I'm yeah. I mean, is DC Universe doing the way of the dodo? Because I mean, besides Titans, and, we all know it is. Yeah. Okay, besides, we know it. Like, besides Titans and Young Justice, nothing else is is, is exclusive. Yeah, it's, Patrol's going to HBO Max. Star Girls on CW. Even they're going to be doing that. They're going to be showing that first season of Swamp Thing on CW. What they're going to do with DC EU is they're going to do the they're going to do what Marvel Unlimited they're going to they're going to they're going to cut its price and do a Marvel Unlimited where you're just going to be able to go go get Action Comics number one, which I think is a perfectly viable platform for it. You know, I I mean I just say like I said throw it mix it into HBO Max and just make HBO Max that much more of a valuable service. Oh, but it costs money to mix it in. That's the only thing. You know, they already have most of it over there, anyways. Yeah, I mean, yeah, somebody, yeah, I mean, somebody needs to give me my '90s Swamp Thing. Okay, mm. why is it? It's not on HBO Max. It's is not that on the Alan Moore stuff. Can they still show that stuff? I mean, I don't know. All I know is I want my '90s TV Swamp Thing. Oh, '90s me. TV Swamp Thing. Okay, okay. That's I know. I know the other week, Matt Kona was saying the first episode of the uh, Swamp Thing animated series was on YouTube. Yeah. There's only like eight episodes of that thing. You so know that? what is the deal with, with Warner's just... Oh, could you answer that? Talk to your grandpa? Or give that to mom? Anyway. Um... The mustache is busy. So, yeah, I'm sorry, you know. It's... Yes. Um... I'm not a fancy man. But you know that's my thing. That's my thing with it is that um, why is all of Warner, Warner's stuff just spread out everywhere, and they're still spreading it out more? It's I like think, one they're I, I, they're trying to pull stuff because I mean like they're pulling their stuff slowly from Netflix because eventually Flash 
Supergirl and Legends, Black Lightning, they're going to be all off of Netflix and on HBO Max. Well, yeah. out in the U.S. They're still yeah. going to be distributing it everywhere else. But can't they see most of that stuff on the CW app? Well, you can only do up to five episodes on the CW app. Okay, so, well, how many I, episodes I, do I want to watch? Although I did, uh, although I did well, see... Uh, well, there are fans of the show. Okay. Even. I, I did see uh, the fir- that whole first season of Batwoman's already on HBO Max. Yeah, because that yeah. one was they already when that show premiered, they already said it was going to be streaming on HBO Max exclusively. So is Nancy Drew. So they're already pulling these newer CW properties yeah. to HBO Max. So they're going to. You take should watch Nancy head. Drew, by the way. It's good, guys. Oh, I yeah. Have a reason to get HBO Max, but, but watch it. Well, it's, it's a different take. The CW app take, had the like whole it. first season. The CW app had the whole first season for a while to watch the whole series. Yeah. That 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 has the same uh, actress as um, I'm not okay with this, right? No. No. Different girl. Different girl. How about no? Oh, that's just this. One. So, I mean, they're just kind of. It looks like in a way they're they're you know they're, unified, they're unraveling at the seams, you know, and I'm yeah. just chomping at the bit. So us fans can buy DC comics back. I'm telling that's, you, I want to know. On the precipice, people. I want to know where my Pennyworth season two is. You know, and then we actually my... found where Epic is, so I agree. Yeah. Um. So school way down on your guide. Yeah. You know? oh. Yeah, it was like. 1,062, no lie. <laughs> <laughs> like, Gotham isn't streaming on HBO because that one's probably like some weird le- legality. I'm not saying yeah. it. Disney owns uh, it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's, like, it's on Netflix and, or Hulu. I don't know, both. Who cares? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I just want HBO Max to... You know what they should have done? Here we go. You ready? Cat and the ducks in a row. <laughs> Made yes. made for TV movie, okay, of Krypton, and wrapped up what would have like done a Krypton movie and wrapped up what season three should have been. Yeah, since and and given us that like it's something cool at launch, like they did all. Remember when Sci Fi used to do like a season of Battlestar and then like a movie? Yeah, like give us a Krypton movie that you know ties up the the loose ends of season two. But all those things cost money, uh, Tyler. It, it would have been easier and cheaper than a Snyder cut, I bet you. Uh, yeah, most definitely. of the Snyder cut is already shot. Aren't they reshooting? Aren't it's they the shooting? Edit, no. It's, it's uh, $31 million. I heard, I heard he, 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 he wanted he, people to come back for reshoots. Not yeah, reshoots. he wants lots it's of no, things. Not reshoots. <laughs> they, they agreed on no reshoots. It's just ADR. Oh. It's all. It's only post production. Are they going to put the mustache back? So it's just, you know, you shut uh, your mouth, Philip. Audio. It's pr- it's all the yeah. special effects. It's all the post production stuff because everything else yeah. was shot. Um, so they're not shooting new footage, but they're just doing what the post production would have been. Yeah, they're, um, they're they're keeping Snyder on a, on a short leash, and they're going to let him. No, put not something really. Hmm. Well, trust me, with Snyder, it's always shorter than the uh, than the leash he wants to be on. Um, so my thing is just giving you something unique that says just HBO Max that has some sort of name recognition. Because, like, yeah, great. Like, what, here in a few months, Peak or next year, Peacock's supposed to launch? And that's where they're going to move the office to? And that's going to be the place to stream the office? At this point, like you said... Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. NBC is trying to get in on... NBC oh, yeah. is more of a cluster crack than AT&T. Lilith, Lilith, I, that's all that I'm gonna say. Lilith, you know, Lilith, you know what they're, you know what I saw in the commercial already. Every episode of every Law and Order ever. I mean, SVU by itself is 21 seasons. Um, yeah. USA I mean, wants to have a word with you. Actually, <laughs> so, what I'll tell you, well, the thing, well, see, Peacock basically said, basically the thing, the Peacock's big selling point is it's free. Yeah, this is gonna it's have a free version. Free. Yeah, yeah, it's all ad supported, so yeah, I know Lilith. Yeah, you know, <laughs> unlike uh, <laughs> Lilith, you do not represent you and Maz are not the whole of the humanity. Well, okay, I'll say this. I, I mean, this segues into something I want to talk about. I I just discovered today. Uh, there's an NBC app that I was watching. I was watching Quantum Leap episodes for free today. Thank you very much. The Loved whole it. Quantum Leap. Yeah. What? Yeah, Quantum Leap. Original Quantum Leap. 
Scott Bakula, yeah. yeah. But yeah. but Lilith, there were ads. Mm-hmm. But it was free. <laughs> but it was free. Actually, that's I'm something a- I found is that yeah, like I'm on Tubi, sure there's lots of stuff. There's lots of stuff you can find if you don't mind an ad. You know. Yeah. I mean, and as I've IMDb- always said, we all have to pee. IMDb has their own stuff now. You can watch movies yeah. on from IMDb. Yeah. And, and I'm just great TV shows like Rockford Files, and, which were written to have commercials in them. You yeah. know? It, it's like there's so much and that I think is one of the biggest problems with the with the market glut is when you say, "Oh, we're going to have all of the friends." Well, <laughs> Friends was written with commercials. So if you watch it without commercials, first off, you know, I, 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 just, I just feel that it's, well, it won't necessarily hurt the timing of watching the show. It, it misses the fact that this was written with breaks in it, so. where there's meant to be spots where, okay, the joke ends, here's a, here's a break, and now here's the next thing. And you know what? I think that, quite frankly, people are going to get sick of paying every single for every single thing they want, and they go, "You know what?" Then don't. Then don't. But Arg. then, but there's so many things we <laughs> That's want. That's what causes ARG. That's what causes piracy. When it was just like Netflix and Hulu, piracy was at an all-time low. Now it's ticked way back up. I'm just saying. Too many choices. People are like, "Well, I'm not paying all that money." That's all I'm saying. That's that's the th- and that's you why CBS, like, with Netflix and, and Marvel and all of them they're gonna have to work it out. That's why like people like waited till they did every episode of The Mandalorian, signed up for the free trial, binged it, dropped it, because this is the way. Yeah, I mean, yeah. exactly. Like, you know, people like it's it's. I think that's out. an overstatement of how much of a dent that really made. But no, I'm just saying it's the it's the mindset of people being tired of all this. Like I had to explain to my mom multiple times about CBS All Access because she was asking about the new Star Trek series, and then the Picard. I was like, Mom, it's not on CBS; it's on their streaming channel. And she's like, But I, you know, why do we have CBS? And I'm like, Well, (laughs) why do you have CBS? (laughs) Uh, My wife found a, a show where they murder people, so we have to keep it now. It's just, um, it's just one of those things. Um, it's just one I of those. I got that double things. indemnity, man. Uh, you know, it just gets harder. Take care of my family. It just gets annoying because you know, eventually, it feels like everybody's going to go back to cable or something. Because uh, I mean, basically, all the streaming service cobbled together is cable. So yeah. Well, I mean, and if you as... don't have cable, they give you a surcharge if you want to go internet only. So you know, what are you going to do? As an example, if you have a uh, Kindle or, or if you have Fire or something like that and you want HBO Max, you can get it if you have Hulu. So you can stream HBO Max as a channel within Hulu. Although I, all, or, or I have a big cable I can just connect to my uh, TV and my uh, laptop. So. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's it shouldn't oh be that. God, that that takes me back to like 2004. It shouldn't be <laughs> hey, that. Difficult. Everything else I can stream through that Amazon Fire Cube, my Disney Plus, my DC Universe, my CBS All Access, my Amazon Prime. Guys, it's really just the simple of mirror casting, unless you have Quibi, which literally disables it. But Quibi is a whole nother bottle of wax that I don't ever want to talk about. I'm just saying, everything like else Quibi. I subscribe to, I can stream on that TV in there, except for HBO Max. And it, it just, to me, is a bad thing of launching this product and not having it accessible. It's classic, man. You know? They just well, you know, just, it together. Well, let me, let me be a devil's advocate here. Is it maybe that AT and T wants us to watch just watch everything on our phones. Well, and I mean, why? to be fair, young kids do do that. They live yeah, well, on their exactly. phone. Yeah. They watch like, TV yeah. on their phone. They yeah, play but, video games on their phone now. Yeah, but why you can't? Know, thank you, uh, you, Google Stadia. Yeah, but why can't you do both? Why can't you offer it for both? Well, I mean, because because well, because well, to to make it simple, uh, Phil, if you watch it on their phone, then you've got. All kinds of data issues, yeah. usage issues, uh, amateur, amateur a- amateurization issues of the phone sale and the phone upgrade. 
there's lots of reasons why AT&T would love if you just had one device and everyone in your family had one device to watch whatever they wanted, however they wanted on that one device. Yeah, but if your kid's watching uh, TV shows on their phone, aren't you getting them the unlimited uh, data or whatever? Well, you can't get that with AT&T. Um, you connected to their Wi-Fi and you um, cap Wi-Fi. their meta limits. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Hello. Well, you would have to... So, yeah, you have to be on, on a Wi-Fi network. And because AT&T, I don't think, is offering the uh, unlimited data package that I was lucky enough to get when they first did this um, yeah. for for unlimited cellular data, you probably have to get a landline fiber cable from AT&T. I must say, I had AT&T unlimited like four years ago. And yeah. it was... They were quick to cap you. That's all I'm saying. They're, yeah, they, I mean, they went to their, there was the pure unlimited, and then there was the, uh, oh, what's the, hold on, the, where they didn't, they would slow you down, and then they also had the one was like, depending on your tower congestion. If you're, yeah. if your tower is a busy tower, you get slowed down. But luckily, I live far enough away from everybody that, uh, that never happens. Yeah, and for what it's worth, I have never really had a major problem with my AT and T connectivity uh, in my house with my with my little my little hotspot router. So um, maybe we're just lucky. But as near as I can tell, when I got it, they decided that they were going to let the unlimited be unlimited, which may be why they discontinued the unlimited. So as an early adopter, we got we got in right at the time where our Wi Fi system worked out perfectly so um but yeah that's that's where we're at with all this come on AT&T, 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 drive AT&T, AT&T stock down that's all i'm waiting on that's all yeah. i'm waiting on that's like stock market a little more aggressively hostile take is coming from little hellfire sounds like a blind jan watch your back, watch now, your the back other here. option is is that like i said at&t at least wants people to start on their phones that's why they delay other other platforms to take it so if you start on your phone, maybe you get used to using it on your phone. Because if you want to be on there at launch, you have to put it on your phone. And so you've gotten used to watching a few things on your phone. So that maybe when they expand it out, you still say, yeah, but you know, I'll just watch it on my phone. Yes, just what I want. The watching it's all toilet phone potter, phone is what Charlie's saying. Well, you know what? If you want to it's lie in bed potter. quietly and watch on your phone and not have the TV on, blaring at the whole house, sometimes that's what you want, you know? If you want to be under the covers and watch some, you know, TV shows as a kid, that's what you want. Watching it on your cell phone. So, I think there might be a there, there might be a method in their madness. There might be a plan of what they're doing in delaying the rollout to other platforms. Like but I mean, one. they were they released it on everything but Fire Stick and Roku. So I mean, wait, don't what you else have is Apple there? TV? No? It, it's on Apple, Apple TV. TV anymore? No, I had yeah, it's on Apple TV. No, I had an order one and when, uh no when I uh Okay. Yeah. Trade but who has it. Apple TV? A lot Apple, of people have Apple TV. Apple makes no, money really, because truly. they're expensive, not because they have market saturation. That, that's true, but a lot of people it's very simple for old people to use too though. Yeah. It's what I get I'm, I'm just saying, you know, it's you know, there is market saturation, and then there is you know companies that are profitable because they just it's hipster. A lot of money. It's hipster dude. Trust yeah. me, I am not an Apple person. And plus, if you have all <laughs> Apple products, it it integrates. It makes it nice. Integrates very easily. It does. Well, that's, yes, that's with other Apple like products, whereas other products integrate with whatever you have. I mean, like, you well, know, I went you with have... the Fire Cube this time, and now I can't watch HBO Max unless I'm on my computer. Yeah. Thank you. But oh, like, it's the learn, Philip. Don't. Well, I mean, you don't have, uh, you know, like a Amazon phone and an Amazon computer, you know, or you know, my friend he likes he has Google Chromecast and has a Google phone, so that integrates. Mm-hmm. But like Apple, you know, you have your computer, your phone, your tablet, your TV. It all integrates nicely. Amazon's just fine on my phone and my computer, so. Um, but it's not an Amazon phone. So I'm no, saying like, they tried that. Nobody wanted it. You yeah, can get it for like a hundred bucks now. 
Yeah, because you know that's the thing. I think people want to have choices in their manufacturing manufactured product. We're fine being limited in our software platform because, quite frankly, we don't really want to think too much about the software. We just open want open source, baby. Open we want source. seamless. We want seamless integration, not you know hackers paradise uh, integration, Lilith. Um, <laughs> I'm tired of knowing everything. You know, we want we want somewhere we want someone somewhere to get to get fired if if things go wrong in our in our uh, in our software. <gasps> um, Are you saying people that? still use Microsoft? Just saying. And Just and saying. because people get fired when things go wrong at Microsoft. Do they though? or do they just get shuffled around? I feel like the was the last thing I heard from BlackBerry. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure people. Get, it's a corporation, Lilith. They don't want to lose money. Um, you just shuffle people around. Nobody gets fired at Microsoft. Hashtag fight me. I'm, I'm going to say it's not the Catholic Church. They, they, they. Oh. Uh, I call it out. That's my church. I can. I'm, I will call out the Catholic Church for its sins because that's what I should do as a good Catholic. You know. If you don't call out the church for its sins, you aren't a good Catholic. That's my motto. But, um, yeah, no, I think that, you know, a company like Amazon, a company, definitely a company like Amazon, you get fired. Yeah, oh, yeah. Amazon loves to fire people. They yeah, that they'll sure. fire you as soon as look at you. So, you know, I mean, Microsoft may say, well, we are a family and we'll find a place for you. But it ain't going to be in charge of security after what you screwed up, you know. And that's what people want. They want to know there are consequences. And big corporations, big faceless corporations, at least to some extent, have consequences when they screw up. Not like legal or consequences. Have, or, your, or your information gets breached and you don't find out about it for three years. But you were a blissful idiot. So what does it matter? Yeah, well, <laughs> but, you know, but that's the problem. But with open source, if anyone can write the program then anyone can go into the program. So I don't see how open source solves the problem. Hey. hey. If you want to live in an open universe, have an open source. I guess that's fine. Hey, enough of these mega corporations. Who wants to talk some comics? Yay. Oh, Phil's Comics Corner. If you want to hear Charlie and I's thoughts on Avengers 33, be sure to check out uh, Into the Moon Knight, a Moon Knight podcast. Yeah. We can talk about it now, too. I got lots more to say. Oh, I kept yeah. it brief for, 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 for Ray, you know. He did, like, two episodes. He did a short one. You can hear me on there with my drops. And, yeah, Lilith, Charlie, uh, I think Matt Kona dropped. But Matt Kona dropped the, the wrong Moon Knight issue. <laughs> I mean, the wrong Avengers issue, but it's fine. Well, he did the original Avengers 33. That's right. Sadly, Moon Knight was not. I wonder which one that was. Is that the one with Vision? Um, No, 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 no. Um, It has, I think, I, was it Cap or Giant Man has like uh, one of the Sons of the Serpent and like a full Nelson or something. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, well, here's something I got this week because there are old books. Um, oh, minus one. Yes. So. <laughs> no, it's it's number one, flashbacks, the Amazing Spider-Man number one, um, flashbacks. Peter Parker, three years before he got his bit by a spider, and man, let me tell you, this I I I am so in love with Stan Lee from this book because it is like the Stan Leeest, the Stan Lee Leeest. Stanley, I've ever read, and I got to tell you, there is you get to stand soapbox this this month, and yeah, buy it for the soapbox kids. That's what I got to tell you. Uh, let me find the soapbox here. He's talking about this new this new hit hit film that Marvel is producing about this guy named Blade, the Vampire Hunter, and you know what? This is the crazy part. They've got so many stars. They even had room. To put Stanley in it, uh, <laughs> Stanley in a movie. Let's get out Stan of here. Lee is in the movie. He says we might have a contest to see if you can find me. Um, and it is just it, it, it's it's wonderful. Uh, we have and I, I got it. First off, again, Stanley as like a superheroic crypt keeper is really great. <laughs> Where he comes in, tells corny jokes to set up the story in his bombastic style. Then we get into the story. Uh, essentially, the plot line is 
uh, Peter find the, the, that Aunt May is yelling at Peter and Uncle Ben to clean out the attic. Uh, they do the work. Uh, Peter finds all of Uncle Ben's old comics, you yep. know, from the 40s, you know, these crazy comics that don't look anything like the monster comics he's used to. You've got this, I don't know, what, what are these uh, these titles like uh, uh, Marvel Comics and um, Marvel Adventure. And it's very interesting when he goes to actually read them because um, he had never really read superhero comics before. And um, they, they explain that essentially, you know, these were paragons of virtue. These are these very fascinating characters he first gets exposed to. There is a cool little subplot going on at the Daily Bugle between, um, I think this was the guy from uh, uh, the um, Alex Ross books, uh, Phil. And Phil Sheldon. Phil Sheldon. And then there's this other guy who we, we really don't know who he is, but he's, he's all mad because he's, he's getting fluff pieces and he wants to do a true gritty crime story. And he finds out about how there's a new guy muscling in on the Don of all Don's uh, work. And this, I love, we have Peter as like all kinds of golden age heroes. You got him as the angel, human torch, the wizard, the vision, the original vision. And, you know, uh, you find out that the boss of all bosses, he's got this interesting henchman, <clears throat> Gee, I wonder what's going to happen at the end of this story. Oh. <laughs> uh, I they also have this nice thing with uh, Don Rigoletto and Don Fortun Fortunato, uh, where basically you know they each have eye patches, but one is gray and one is black, and they're over the opposite eyes. You know, um, suffice it to say, you get a lot of the influence of things that happened to Peter. Uh, Basically, they try to the kingpin when he sees his power tries to put a let uh, hit on Don Fortuna, but the uh, sad sack reporter luckily you know causes a diversion that causes uh, Don Fortuna to be able to kill all the other mobsters. Um, but he has to go you know has to go to ground, and he tells this other reporter that he owes him a favor. I don't know if that ever came back in Amazing Spider-Man. I don't know if Don Fortuna ever came back, but uh, very cool. But we also see how. Spider-Man gets inspired after this young punk here knocks over Aunt May, spraining her ankle. He says, if only I had a way to reach out and grab him. And then we see Peter, he's giving away all his old comic books, which they then call back to, gee, if only the Parkers had hung on to those, they wouldn't have been in so many financial straits. Uh, we see him designing his first web shooters. Burn! And uh, then you get another backup about just this things you never knew about 13 year old Peter Parker. Like the fact that he actually didn't need glasses. They were actually reading glasses that Aunt May gave him because she was always worried that he was reading too much. And uh, the fact that he was, you know, kind of weak and, uh, and wimpy but never gave up, which is my, my inspiration for a great what if that has never been told. What if Peter Parker had become Captain America? where he gets drafted into Vietnam and they give him the super soldier serum because he is a perfect 4F specimen. So, uh, loved this book. This this was definitely my pick of the week. Ooh. Enjoyed it, yes. But yeah, Dawn And it was free. Oh. It, was one of the, it was one of the free books my comic guy puts up at the start of a lot of his... Uh, a lot of his uh, Facebook grabs, you know, where he puts up all the books that wind up costing me 58 bucks by the end of the week. Uh, but this one, he says, okay, free one before we start. Everyone grab a book. And if you get in first, you can say, I want that one. And then you get it. And I got it. Stole it from somebody else. <laughs> Although <laughs> another guy, victory. another guy grabbed the Secret Defenders with Nomad. That I did not uh, even Phil's know. going to beat you up for not taking that one. That guy got it, got there first. I thought I was the first. And actually, my comic book guy said, it's yours. Then I had guilt because I said, I know that other guy got here first. And so I said, yeah, actually, I think the other guy got here first. And so, but I've never read the Secret Defenders. I didn't even know there was a Secret Defenders with Nomad. And now I'm all, like, that mad cool. and excited. 
that was the whole point of Secret Defenders in the 90s. Basically, Doctor Strange would bring in like three or four heroes who were popular at the time for, you know, a different arc. They were being in like a different team. Yeah. So anyway, but yeah, so I missed that, but it was, uh, but the fir- cover had Nomad on it. I was like very excited about it. So Nomad. Nomad. I, you know, I love my Nomad. Anyway, but yeah, so that was my first book. What did you guys read? Uh, not yet. Did anyone read Amazing Spider-Man? Mm. Well, you know I did. I know you did. I'm still so we... waiting for my shop to open. Oh, man. Oh, We're not even doing you. curbside? Nope. Oh. My man, my my guy said he was not going to listen to a uh, Democratic governor, and he never closed. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. There you, exactly. you got to eat, man. You got to eat. But Lilith, what did you think about the whole Gog thing? Especially where he ends up. Um, eh, I thought it was simple. Like, it's a simple story. I kind of like, it was kind of like photographed a, a while away, but it, it had a it, lot of good character moments and a it, lot it, of humor. Like, I miss Spider Man's humor, so I'm really loving this take. And I'm, I like the art on this. I mean, it's our buddy from uh, Invincible. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no spoilers. Uh, yes, this intergalactic creature is now a uh, is now Peter Parker's pet, <laughs> and wears an inhibitor collar so it can't access the pin particles to make itself a giant again. Because that's not going to blow up in anyone's face, is it, Charlie Esser? Huh? Um, huh. that's a little kinky. That that was a little too kinky for my taste. But hey, wait, no wait, kink who's this here. God guy? Is this is this like a sixties monster? It's like a creature. He part. looks like Sandman on on crack, is what he looks like, with a little bit of Solomon uh, Grundy DNA. Is, is he <laughs> is he like sentient? Because otherwise, because if that case, it's kind of weird. You can't. You, yeah, you can't, it's super weird. You can't keep a house elf, man. That's just wrong. It's like he seems very simple. Her body's hot through nothing. He's like a smart dog almost. At least that's how they played it in this story. Okay, so he's he's a talking dog. Well, he doesn't even really talk. Oh, okay. Basically, so I think when he first showed up, he like showed up in the Savage Land. You know, so one of his things where Craven was like controlling him. Mm. Okay. We got to get Craven hey. up to do. So we could grow and shrink, and now he's just doggy size. But he, is he a happy dog at well, the end he, of it? Well, he seems happy living with Peter and his roommates. Okay, well, there you go. Him and Captain Boomerang, they think that's cool. <laughs> is he still hanging with Captain Boomerang? <laughs> Boomerang. No captain. Yes, Boomerang. How many times did we have this conversation? He was never Captain Boomerang. I think he was at one point captain. He was he was at one point out back. He should have kept. Yeah, we know what you, well, you know. We know the stuff you you remember. I remember nothing. <laughs> Keep the apple juice cold. That's the only thing you ever need to remember. <laughs> okay, so him and boomerang. Lilith, I'm just saying, it. saying it sounds better if you put a captain in front of it. I know uh, Legends of Tomorrow would agree with you. That's why they call her Captain Sarah Lance. Yes. <laughs> Boom! Which, by the oh. way, we do have to talk that finale, Philip. What? Yeah, we'll talk to finale. <gasps> oh, is yeah. that the finale? Oh. That, no, Tuesday. Uh, no, Tuesday. not oh, this, 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 yeah, yeah. this Tuesday coming. So, Lilith. So, yeah. So, next episode of Legends, we'll talk a Flash issue, Legends finale, and two Star Girl episodes. Man. 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 All right. <laughs> uh, Lilith, you want to throw a comic book out? Marauders number 10. I know I'm the only one keeping this damn book afloat, but it's the best X-Men book you're not reading, as I say every freaking time this issue comes out. Pirates, man. Mutant pirates, man. They're all clones anyway. Yeah, but they're cool clones. They're the cool kids. You should be reading that. I know. I know you love clones. I love them. Except for one. How dare you? But no, this book has all the action. It's not like everybody moping around having throuples. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Cyclops, Wolverine, and Jesus. they're doing stuff. They're, they're getting into fights and blowing stuff up. And I don't know. Like sometimes you just need a fun book, man. And Marauders is that fun book for me. Mm-hmm. Oh, did you? Uh, I know we're always talking its praises. Did you read Lois Lane number ten? 
I did. It's kind of losing steam, but that's okay. Well, we're getting to the end. They're going to have to do something because of the show, I'm assuming. Oh. So. We're going to have to unbend this this uh, stuff. <laughs> yeah, them. definitely. Like, I think they're going to want that show to match. Yeah, it's it's Raka, so it's better. But The only thing I got yeah. this week that I haven't read it is what, issue number six of Superman Man of Tomorrow. But I just haven't. I was going to read it in the doctor's office, but I didn't get to. So, yeah, some of like some of those digital ones. Yeah, the, like the Batman. I, I really one, like it. I th- like the first week. I thought some of them were like simple, but I think they've been getting bet. Like as the weeks have been going by, they've been getting some good stories in those. So. Like like last week, we had a Batman, Nightwing, Harley Quinn adventure. Yeah, I, I'm really liking that book. <laughs> Yes, because it's uh, it's free of uh, someone's control. <laughs> yes, yeah. I think that's why we're all trying to enjoy it. But I'm just going to say Supergirl 41 was hot, a hot mess. And a lot of people agree. Is it limping to the finish line? Because that's canceled. It, it is. It is. It's got her, her legs blown off. Um, she's got an eye patch at this point. It looks like a terrible game of Hangman that she's losing at this point. <laughs> It's it's awful. I don't I don't even know what they're doing. They're just taking her out. Like Supergirl is definitely a character. That She's so disrespected. Just, yeah, and they never uh, know what to drives do me it. crazy. They always like kill her or like, take her out of the game for a couple of years. Then they always bring her back with this triumphant return, and they tr- you know they treat her well for like a few years, and but then the cycle starts again, and it's, she just gets disrespected, She's a car- and taken She's out. A character. But they're like, oh, we can give her her own story. She can carry her own book. She can if it's written well. And then they're like, uh, maybe we messed up. Doesn't she have a TV show? Yes. <laughs> but uh, have you watched the TV show? How some of the plot lines are just Superman stories with her in them? Some of them? <laughs> some of them? Yeah, yeah, that's what do you mean by some of, that her stories are just Superman stories with her in them? That makes them her stories. Yeah, but I'm. Well, I think he means like Superman villains and certain plots. He has that, her yeah, own I mean, gallery, believe they, it or they, not, they adapt a, a well-known Superman story. Like they try to do their version of Red it Sun. They try to do uh, for the man who has work. everything. <laughs> um, but instead of just they're like, oh yeah, you know this Superman story. This uh, we'll just go ahead and make it a Supergirl story. Yeah, At least know. that woman had that going for it. It didn't do that. And I'll, I Without will agree with you. Of, they, they made hush their own. I will say that. No, uh, that's uh. That's a whole other thing. I didn't say it was good, but they made. <laughs> don't you dare hashtag feminism. That's um, the episode of Flash we don't speak of, along with the singing episode. Those I, two, think, hey, I tell you, hey, hey, I tell you hey, right hey, now, that you woman. You met is that. garbage. She just go up. It was not bad. Fighting her. Bat Batman wasted Duella Dent. They they could have made Duella Dent into a character that was really interesting, but they but they had Duella her. Dent and Batwoman. Yeah, they wasted her in a really crummy episode. Oh well, that's but just sad. Duella Dent's cool. They could have oh, really we didn't made really her. Talk about that, did we, Phil? That what? you know Ruby Rose is leaving. We didn't talk about that on Capes, did we? On Legend, yeah, I know we talked Cape. on Legends. We did, yeah, yeah. Ruby Rose leaving Batwoman. Nah. And I say Aaron Richards to replace her. It wouldn't be I that could, jarring. I could see that. I like, I, like, I, I like the girl that from um, Krypton that people are pitching yeah, to, but I Wallace love Aaron. Day. I want good Thank things you. for Stabby Babs. I, I like Wallace Day from Krypton because she has, she looks similar and she looks similar to Rachel Scarston or whatever. I don't know. You like yeah. the Rachel Scarston, the one playing the sister, man. Yeah, like let's get people who actually. They look might like have to pay her extra for double duty, though, and you know that that's well, CW budget. Kill off Alice or swap faces, something. Just have her be Kate. Mm. Yeah, no, you know. Um... Oh, He Man and the Masters of the Multiverse number six came out, and that is definitely my pick of the week. Oh, A plus plus. Yeah, it's. Yeah. I was really debating getting this? that. You're crazy. You should get it. I think you'd really like it. Uh, you know, my problem with He-Man is I grew up with He-Man, and I'm not convinced you can go deep on He-Man. Um, 
Did you like the reboot cartoon from the early 2000s? Charlie? I loved it from 2009. Yes. That one was great. Since I was uh, 44 in 2009, no. Uh, <laughs> I liked the... the oh, sorry, you uh, watch DuckTales. Don't you dare. I liked it. <laughs> DuckTales has always had depth. Barks Ooh. is a genius and created a universe that can expand forever. Okay. I, I like the uh, reboot. Well, that's your did. loss. People that uh, ain't checking for He-Man in 2020. He-Man and your loss. Thundercats. I, yeah. Uh, I mean, I think Dolph Lundgren said it best. I'm running around in a fur uh, speedo. There's only so much I can do with that role. Um, it's like something Charlie Esser would say. <laughs> but it's something Dolph Lundgren it's said. It's just, it's really good, but I like I liked the multiverse angle on it. Yeah. Um, it's the end of an era. Tim Silly wrote it, so that's why I think Phil might like it. Oh. Like, Tim Silly does yeah. know how to the character depth, and you know he knows how to drive the plot. So I think that that is definitely why I originally picked it up and it did not disappoint. And the art by Tom uh, Dernick is amazing. I love it so much. It's just, it's really good. And they gave Skeletor, like it fleshed out, haha, it fleshed out Skeletor. Yeah. <laughs> Get the Kona button. <laughs> uh. no. I did like He-Man as a kid. And um, I did enjoy its lore and its, and its history. Because it, it did have a lot of lore. For That's what I think they, they fleshed it out and it's great. Yeah. That's what I think is fascinating about it is it has this lore and they that's did why nothing I, with. Yeah. That's why I would like to see it has a lot of potential. I love when they revealed his mom was from Earth. That was my favorite part when I was a kid. So I'm talking about the original He-Man stories. I don't yeah. know about these reboots you kids watch today. Yeah, no, I'm an OG He-Man too. Yeah, yeah, you know, um, I watched them both. I'm a true fan. I'm a fan. You know, was Orko in fan. it? <laughs> was Orko in it? Does Orko feature prominently in the stories? Of course, not prominently, but he okay. doesn't need to. It's not about him. Oh, honestly, no, honestly, Prince Adam needed to be fleshed out. That's that's the problem. That's why he they think he's very dull and shallow, and they they needed to take the folk. They had a lot of great side characters in He Man, and they do get fleshed out in a lot, a lot of these books, but. It's been Prince Adam that hasn't really been the, the the feature in the in you know in the books, and they actually did it with this one and gave him some really cool character dynamics. I don't know. I guess on part of me, it's just thinking you know Orko's entire thing is he's a multiversal character. He's from another universe, which is why his magic doesn't work in this universe. He's actually insanely powerful, but he lost his you know physics conversion medal. And that's like okay in the old school story. Maybe they retconned that all away. Maybe now he's just an idiot. But um, originally he was Orko the Magnificent, one of the greatest sorcerers in the Omniverse. And then he accidentally lost his, you know, metal that allowed him to travel between universes and maintain his amazing magical powers outside of his original home universe. So <sighs> then wackiness ensued. <laughs> As hey. you do, because it was the eighties. Hey, hey, who wants to know my pick of the week? What was your pick of the week, Phil? What what is it, Philip? I wonder what it could be. What no, take a guess. Was there a bat book that came out this week? Is it Marvel or DC? DC. Oh, um, let's see. Was it Flash? No, well, that was good. That was good. Was it Batman Beyond? No, I didn't get Batman Beyond today. And I, I mean, don't know what's out right now. Unless it was, unless it was late to my store, because like I saw like a, some of the stuff on time, and I'm like, is this coming out this week? My guy's like, no, no, no. Was it was the terrific. What was it? Green Lantern season two, number three. Oh, they're finally okay. giving me what I want. How Wait, Green Lantern it? has seasons now? I guess they went like what twelve, then they uh did like what like a three issue miniseries i didn't pick up in between yeah and then they did season two you know instead of just renumbering i guess now they're just going, <laughs> going by oh, why is it season is it two is that like supposed to be like if this was a live action green lantern i guess yearly i don't know because they did 12 i think and then they yeah renumbered so okay i don't because um, yeah. the extended what season so thing, that's it, something though? that you do when you're doing a comic book based on an old tv show and want to show its continuity like Smallville season eleven, exactly. You know, which is excellent, and they should make the animated cartoon revival based around that. 
And that's what DC, uh, that's what HBO Max should be working on instead of the Snyder Cut. I know a lot of people want to see it, but I have other things, other projects that could use Why? the $31 million. Why? You know what they should have did? Crisis. You know what they should have did? They should have made Justice League Dark Apocalypse War an HBO Max exclusive and included those other 15 films you were supposed to watch <laughs> so that I could go like, oh, okay, so that's a reference to this and this is that. And then I could watch all 15 films in one place and get the entire Apocalypse Saga because that, that was a ready-made product that they had would have cost them nothing to do it that way. And they would have gotten people going and say, oh, man, this is so great. I get to watch that entire animated DC universe. And I can watch the entire Apocalypse War, including the new final cut, the final episode of the 15-episode saga. This is going to be amazing. Charlie, and this is what happens when you don't hire capes and lunatics. Just saying. Yeah. It's what happens when you don't hire us. And I'm just saying, it's like that's like that's the brilliance. That would have been perfect because it because that dropped like a week before HBO Max dropped. So would have they lost that much money just having that be the cherry on the well, top of? The, the uh, well, digitally it came out too. Yeah, yeah, came yeah. Digitally came out earlier. Well, month. whatever, a month. Okay, they lost a month of people paying twenty dollars to see a mediocre cartoon. Um, <laughs> You know, it's really. Let's be honest. Um, you know, it was a it it was a mediocre cartoon that would be less mediocre if you had seen all the films that had come before it. Yeah. Like, yeah. Everybody so who was have. invested in the universe liked it. So. <laughs> well, that's the thing, but that but you could have created a situation where not only could people have seen that, but they could, but those who hadn't seen it, and people said, "Oh man!" But you know, it's going to fit in so perfectly into the whole storyline. Then you could have had that interconnection. You could have had that expanded universe, and that would have gotten people excited about buying into HBO Max that first day. You know, I'm just saying that just seems like that was obvious. Why didn't they do that? Because it's AT and T. They're not good at planning. Uh, I think part of it is just that there's so many properties like that sprinkled throughout. Like there's certain one of there's certain of those films that are on Hulu that you can watch. And there are some, you know, that are on DC universe and some, um, so that's, well, first off, they own DC universe. So there should not be any reason why you can't have something on HBO max and DC universe. I mean, I'm surprised at the stuff that's on Disney plus that's on HBO max. That no, Disney. Max that's interesting. I don't understand. That's just interesting. Like, yeah, you know, I mean, that's the thing is, and it's not like these guys aren't eating off the same sandwich, you know, they're, they're all, they all got that big party hero sub. They're all going to take their pieces and they're okay. all going to be touching each other. So, you know, you got to deal with everybody to get We're these things done. With this again. Well, you this never had like a big party head. sub and it's all the pieces. That I, are don't, together. I don't even eat birthday cake. Because people blow the yeah, yeah. Out, so. Well, for those of us who socialize, so so back in the day, human. See, right now, Lilith is like, I don't understand what's everyone complaining about. But back in the day, we used to go to grand events, and there'd be large amounts of food that we would all touch and eat. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, Tristan agrees with you, Lilith. But yeah, it, it's a thing, man. <laughs> gobble gobble. This is how the world once. This is what the before times were. Um, and I'm glad. Was, I'm glad I didn't see it. <laughs> and this is. And this is. This. This was a glorious time. And this is. This is the digital version of that. You know, Disney will make deals. AT and T needs to make deals, and they need to get their content in one place, so that they can have. Something that you can have as a a a, a continuous. What they need is new story. leadership. That's what they need. They need new leadership. You know what? He's going to tell you a leader can only do so much. You need people that are actually leading from behind. You know, you need people that actually are doing stuff. On you need you know, if and nothing else, you may have this mindset where people feel too dang comfortable in their jobs at AT and T because it's like, well, they wait, AT and T. A lot of there, so it's a start. 
we're my bell. You know, we don't have to worry about, you know, what we're going to do tomorrow. So we're going to just do what we have done. And so long as we don't screw up, it's, it's basically, you know, the problem with, with a huge monopoly or a huge oligopoly or mo monopoly or whatever you want to call it, any large corporation or uh, any communist state is that the risk of trying and failing outweighs the risk of trying and succeeding. So if you try and succeed, you will get, have a grand uh, outcome and your loss will be backstopped um, in certain, in most situations. Like you're not going to go to the gulag because, you know, you drilled an oil well and it didn't pay off. You're going to lose your money, but you're going to be okay. I don't know what's going on. In, um, in a large corporation, if you make the mistake that loses money, you're the one that gets called out for losing money, even if that, even if it was money we had to lose, even if what happened doesn't really affect our bottom line, and it was a great risk that if it had paid off would have been amazing. People get risk averse. What is, for what it's worth, I will say this: Disney, for as big and corporate as it is, and as controlled as it is, it is not risk averse. And it's willing to eat its failures. It's willing to try new things, go out on the limb, and if it fails, it fails. But you know what? That doesn't mean the whole thing well, is Well, that's what is, Disney is was built on as a company motto, too. That, that was what well, it was all about. So, you know, yeah, you're talking you about, know. you know, actual company culture and philosophy, things that they actually believe in versus, you know, AT&T. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's the thing. And, and I think that's... That is probably HBO's problem, Warner's problem, AT and T, AOL's problem. Although actually, I think AOL actually did get spun off from all of them, so AOL may be its own company now, which means they lost that entire brand. Again, short sightedness. You know, you don't get rid of the brand of the internet from the '80s just because. Oh, now it's not as hip. It's like, dude, you know things cycle. You know, eventually, if you were to relaunch AOL, AOL it's now, never making a comeback, homie. I'm sorry to break it. Trust to you. me. You, let me put it to you that let me. AOL existed as a one-stop shop for the internet before oh, there was oh, an oh, internet. Oh. AOL was. I the remember internet. what AOL was, and it was trash. And I was so glad that that was done with. Like yeah. a lot. Of okay, people. Lilith. Okay, Lilith. Maybe for you people that you know shun you know advancement technology and the hoi polloi. But for the hoi polloi of which I was a happy member. I don't know what he said, but I think he insulted you. <laughs> AOL. No, she actually takes it as a compliment. She has no interest in the hoi polloi. Um, yeah, it, it, it was all about DSL for me. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. You're in for another few years. Well, okay. And that's the other thing. Of course, Lilith, of course, is like 40 years younger than me. And so, I'm a city kid. So. Yeah, so. <laughs> Hey, I grew up in a city. It wasn't a city when I was born there, but it was a city by the time I grew up there. Um, <laughs> yes, that is true. Um, Wait, let me hear listen to all this. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm Wait, sorry I do have fight. one more pitch before we go, though. I want to give a shout out to Colin Bunn, our Rogue Planet number one over on Oni Press. If you are a Fire um, Firefly fan, this might be right up your uh, alley. It's about the salvage vessel crew on the on a ship called the Cortez. Um, they're tracking a lonely planet that has a whole bunch of like goodies that they want to steal, and shenanigans and horrors and soup from there. Um, the artwork by Andy Mc McDonald is great. It, I mean, if you got four bucks to spend, I think you might enjoy it. What is that Rogue Planet? Number okay. one. Well, since no one wanted to talk Green Lantern, Lil, did you read Venom 25? I did, but I don't know why. I mean... <laughs> why story, is this still a book again? I mean, the main story is basically him just, like, talking to the Avengers, basically, what, recapping everything that's happened in the last year? Yeah. What was this for? Because it was, I was like, it's issue 25, baby. What are we doing here? Come on. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The main story was him talking to the Avengers, and then there was that backup story that took kind of takes place behind the scenes after Amazing Spider Man 347, where he's basically fighting guys on that yeah. island, a la Oliver Queen. It, it, I'm confused. I don't know what we're doing anymore. I think that's my last Venom book for a while. I haven't picked Why up Why is Venom, Venom talking to the Avengers? 
because they because were... everybody has to talk to the Avengers now. Didn't you get the memo, Charlie? Okay, but I guess I'm just like... Everybody has to cycle through. Literally, he said, "I want people to look at me the way they look at Spider Man." Okay, well, maybe stop eating people because you didn't used to. That's all new, man. <laughs> Wasn't even you. That was that Matt Garrigan thing. You know? Oh no, he was... that. he threatened that back in the nineties, eating people's brains and stuff. He threatened, but he never did. A couple of bulls down the gold. As far as we know. Hey Lilith. What happens off panel stays off panel. Lilith. A couple of bulls down the yeah. gold. Oh my. <laughs> See what happens when you don't listen to enough for the Scarlet Spider. A couple of bulls down the gold. That, that is oh, a that's sausage fest. Well, I know you boys have some other things to do. So on that note. Yes, on that note, since yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, on that note. Yeah, so to check out the comic books everyone else recommended, uh, send us your thoughts on HBO Max, the Snyder Cut. Email us, capes and lunatics at email.com. Call the voicemail, 614-382-2737. That's 614-38CAPES. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all YouTube. Oh, I'll have to put our new stream yard up on uh, Linktree. That's L-A-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Capes and Lunatics. And remember to support the sponsors, Tweaked Audio, Hunt a Killer, Pod Life the Book, Volume 1, is now in digital and paperback. Volume two is in the works with young Mr. Tyler Patrick. It's going to be a fun chapter. That's right. You guys will like it. I bet. And when you go to buy any of that, use the link for Amazon for Southgate Media Group right down there in the show notes because send somebody to rob Master Doom Southgate because he cannot afford to shave or put pants on. Go back and look at my history. And you will find out I am right so much more often than I'm wrong. Mark my words. Tyler Patrick, where can people find you in the Krypton Report? You can find me at Krypton Report Podcast, basically there. Anywhere on Facebook, Twitter. Um, Yeah, it's the best place to find me. I'm tired of knowing everything. And he does. Lilith Hellfire. If you nerds want to find me on the interwebs, find me on Twitter at Lil Hellfire or on Instagram with the cool kids at Lil Hellfire 86 or at Lil Hellfire 69 because I'm a child and I think that's funny. <laughs> 10 more episodes, guys. Get ready. What? 10 more episodes. Oh, I thought you said ready. two. I thought you said two. I was going to say, what's, what's, what's 161? I'm not yeah. drunk. I know how to count. Speaking of drunk, Charlie Esser, where can people find you? Well, if you'd like to write to me in that old fashioned email way the way our Mars and Boswins did, do so at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word, at gmail.com. And follow me on the Twitters as I live tweet things that I can step for, which sadly was not Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. this week, because it started at 10, 8, 10 p.m., and I was asleep by 9.30. Oh, the sorrows of my life. Ah, oh, I did like tweet the last 15 minutes of it, but that was not enough. Anyway, I will try better next time. I promise. At Charlie Esser, that's C H A R L I E E S S E R. Look for the two E's in the middle. For quality. Bing. Thank you, Moz. <laughs> and pause. All right. Who knows what's coming next week? Yep, Tristan his shackle. <laughs> oh yeah, pause. And yes. but for another week, we have been your capes. Ampersand. Lunatics. <laughs> okay, you guys gotta work that out. That's you guys gotta do that at the start <laughs> of the show. You gotta say, okay, so we're gonna be the Loon. lunatics. So be Kate the- and Loon. Oh, the tits. <laughs> I'll, give, I'll give you that. Vowel. We're all gonna say Luna, and you got. Tits. I got the smallest tits. word, guys. You guys can fight over the other two. You got Luna. Ticks. There you go. You probably last her alone. Not dance, puppets dance. Don't you hear the music? <laughs> Not much dancing. Spark master. There's our showboat.